there and welcome back to Japan where I'm going to be giving my review of the latest Wagaki band song Aria of Life. As always, if you want to check out the song first of all, there is a link in the description below and there'll be a link at the end of this video, but do please check out the song first of all, otherwise how are you going to understand a review? Now, this is one that I've been looking forward to uh, coming out and having a little listen to because at the moment Wakaki Band have been doing some really interesting stuff and I think they're trying to make a sound that's a little bit more universal, trying to appeal to people overseas as well, you know, as Japanese music is getting a little bit of a hold. Well, it's had a hold for a while, but getting more of a hold in foreign territories with bands like obviously Baby Metal doing really well over the last decade, with um, Bandmade doing so well in recent years, um, and also things like the Olympics. I'm Seemingly the Olympics probably isn't going to happen, but I know that was something that they certainly would have benefited from a lot. So they've certainly been directing themselves at that more international market. So there's a few ways that I want to look at this song. But first of all, I've got my notes here, and I would just say that the first thing that hit me, though, from the very first pressing of play was just the tone of this song. Now, this is something that I said a lot about Queen of the Night, which came out uh, not so far before this is that there's just something really nice about these slower mid-tempo songs especially now they seem to have had a really good session on this uh this album um there's something really nice about the whole tone of them you're really getting the feeling that whereas in some of their earlier songs like Senbon Takara, a lot of those famous ones uh, a lot of the time they had to do what you consider to be the just the normal process of if you've got a lot of sounds happening in arrangement, then in the studio you kind of have to thin out the frequencies that each instrument plays on just to give room to all of them. But a lot like Queen of the Night, this one, both in having a slightly more sparse arrangement and also seemingly just in the way that they've executed it in the studio, you're really getting to hear the tone of every single instrument, which I really like about this. I love the fact that it's tonally rich. Each one of the instruments really feels like it's right there with you. You get the whole, the whole body of each instrument. And so I love that, and especially when you've got a singer like Yuko who's got such a wonderful voice, you want to hear that voice come across in all its depth. And I think, yeah, I just, I get the feeling that their recent studio sessions have been really good on this side. And I do think their um, arrangements uh, are really leaning towards that as well. I mean, obviously you have some of the songs where... Um, where it's really sort of more full energy, you know, like, like I say, Senpon Zakura also singing for, and those sorts of ones where, you know, it's harder to do that. So as a result, the sounds are seemingly mixed a little bit more thin, but it's nice to also hear the balance with these songs. Reminds me a little bit actually of uh, stuff like uh, Synchronicity beforehand. And there are some other comparisons that I want to draw actually maybe with Synchronicity as well. But one thing that I've got to mention is that this song is really, really quite catchy. It's, yeah, okay, it's not like number one single catchy, but it's really catchy. And I think part of that is, um, as it mentions in the title uh, below the YouTube video, that this is actually a, uh, a theme tune for an anime. So um, I don't know the anime, but I'm sure a lot of you guys probably do. Um, it's one where I think that's pro it probably plays into that. You obviously want a catchy song if you're doing a theme tune, but it does have a real catchiness to it, which I think does help a lot. Um, I gave it a few listens through, and as I was listening through to it, I did find myself actually just starting to, you know, the chorus start to slowly sink into my head. Now, um, from a uh, from a melodic standpoint, it's not doing anything particularly complicated or even particularly new for these guys. It's very much in the scales that they usually work with. It's very much in a sound that is familiar with them. Again, something that I will come back to a little bit later on in this review. But it does culminate in a chorus that does work. It does have that feeling that, like I say, it does make you want to come back around to it. And like I say, the chorus did actually grow on me. In its simplicity, I don't know uh, over time whether it's going to be one of those ones where it's going to start to grate with time, but um, it certainly hasn't grated yet, like I say, at the moment, after a good few listens through now, with it just coming out a couple of hours ago, it certainly has been having all of the right effects on me, and certainly feeling like it's um, it, it's catchy catchy in a simple way as well I'd say so yeah melodically it is quite simple but what I've actually managed to do here is as with the all of their best songs there's the complexity is underneath now like I say the arrangement of this is a mid-tempo arrangement a little bit more sparse there's not like all the hundreds of details thrown in that some of their more bombastic and fast songs have but there is a lot of details and I feel there was a sort of subtle mixture of styles here now going back to that synchronicity reference um, it did feel a little bit like I, I did get a sort of air of what uh, synchronicity had there was a slight jazziness i don't know if i was being slightly biased by the video but i had a few listens without looking at the video as well um there was that slight jazziness to it which i think was also helped uh, and alluded to a little bit by um it had some very core 
uh, contemporary band elements really at the core of this. Like the bass line at points, the bass line was very sort of smooth and cream with a sort of like a, almost like a smooth jazz quality to it. Nothing too complicated, but some nice little uh, nice little runs on the bass. It was sort of a nice structure to the way that was working. And the, the tone again, very sort of thick, creamy tone, very almost jazzy tone to the bass underneath everything. Um, and then the drums. Great feels on the drums. I really like some of the feels on the drums here, and especially the way that it worked with the Taikos was wonderful. This sort of mixture of the traditional Japanese drums with the Western kit was brilliant here. But what the Western kit was doing, you get that sort of very uh, sharp, well, say Western kit, contemporary kit, whatever you want to call it, um, very sort of sharp tone to it, um, giving, like I say, all the sharper tones were coming out of uh, the contemporary kit, which meant that those sort of more bigger, rounded sounds coming out of the Taiko nicely balanced off against it. But this meant that you had that sort of nice little bounce to the contemporary kit, to the rock kit, to the jazz kit, whatever it is. I, I, I wish I knew more about drum kits. Um, it, it had that feeling where it felt really like it had a sort of sharp, almost jazzy bounce, which was kind of interesting because you had a lot of little things like double kicks and everything happening underneath as well. It did bounce again between doing something a bit more jazzy, something a bit more rock at points. The um, work with the guitar as well, that had some quite uh, rock bits in it. You had obviously a real leaning towards the... Um, towards the Japanese traditional sounds as well. So I felt like a lot of little different aspects were coming in. I know that's something which is quintessentially with Gaki Band anyway, but <clears throat> they tend to have a different balance in different songs. Like I say, Synchronicity goes in a much more jazz direction. Uh, things like Queen of the Night go in a much more um, traditionally Japanese direction, <clears throat> as does Senbon Zakura. Might be a cover, but tonally, obviously. And then they got things like Ignite, which are much more rock. This felt like it had a very sort of even-handed balance, even for something which was a bit of a mid-tempo ballad. It felt like it had an even balance of the different uh, sounds that are quintessentially part of what they do. Now, I must say that the uh, the core cool thing that we come around today on this, and because uh, we have a really great community on this channel, see different people with different views. Obviously, I am someone who you guys know, I am very, I just love the sound of this band. I love Yuka's voice. I love the fusion of the contemporary and Japanese. And I think that they do it on it in every song they do. I've never heard a song before. I've, some of theirs I like more than others, but I've never heard a song by them before where I felt like the formula didn't work or that they'd done something with the formula that had tripped themselves up. They always seem to get to me the most out of it. But I've heard a lot of people on my channel who say quite the opposite which is really interesting so it's really nice hearing you guys in the discord and in the discussions and in the comments as well with this one um therefore i think we, we hit a bit of an interesting point in that if you are talking about the sound because the sound is very well managed here it's really well mixed it's really well um are nicely arranged. I love that sort of long instrumental bit where um, it, it. This is one of the great things about when they have solos in Magaki Band songs because it's because they've got so many instruments. Basically, the solo becomes crafted into this big sort of musical arrangement of its own. It's not just about sort of the music underneath one instrument playing a solo. They bounce between them. It builds. It molds. It's exactly what I want from a solo. When I'm always talking about this, is what I want the solo to be. It's kind of what I mean. I want it to be like a big almost well, basically like you're having classical music it isn't just kind of this is an instrument doing a thing this is here's the instrument in the front and then everything molds around it and then often more than one instrument doing the instrumental i will get back on topic so um what i was going to say though is that the although tonally everything about this is really sort of uh, you know in a great place i say good uh the, the sounds will come through brilliantly it's nicely arranged I do think however it's them building upon what they've done before in those aspects which means that if you are a Wagaki Band fan or if you like their sound or if you're someone who's already into them I think that on that aspect um, you're going to hear it and you're going to be impressed and you're going to like it and it's going to be giving you a lot of what you already like um, but you know in, in a, a sort of a really great way showing sort of progress in that element but I don't think that the sound is going to win over anyone who wasn't already interested in them because I think that if you already felt that their sound was messy or if you already felt that their sound wasn't getting the most out of any one instrument I don't think this is going to convince you otherwise so sound wise I don't think this is going to win anyone new over however I think that, that sort of simple catchy melody might well open this up as being more welcoming to people who maybe just felt you know, maybe didn't really sit down and listen to them before, maybe just sort of heard a little bit and went, that's not for me. This might bring them in to have a closer look. So I think this could be good for winning over some new fans, you know, maybe people who watch the anime or something like that. Or if I, if I get, I gather that Gaki Band have actually done a lot of stuff on anime before. I, I don't, for someone who lives in Japan, and like I say, into Japanese music, I don't really have much knowledge of anime. That's what we have James and Bubbles and the other guys for. Um, but yeah, for me, I, um, I listen, 
I, I listen to this and I hear that it's got that sort of welcoming catchiness that you'd associate with a theme tune. So maybe a lot of um, anime fans might already have heard of them, but maybe this will bring in some new people, get some new people listening. And I do think that if their um, goal of like maybe, uh, it's kind of an assumed goal, but I'm pretty sure of this, of trying to get a little bit of that international market um, building up as well. If that's part of it, I do think this is going to help them in that aspect as well. It sounds so patronizing to say, but a simple, catchy chorus, um, even like I said, if it's not like the greatest chorus ever, it's certainly good enough that it settles in your ears and just gives you a smile and you can sort of you get it caught in your head. It, it's it's a good enough chorus to be a good single chorus. And so, like I say, I think maybe it will just help them get through to people who might have only casually listened to them before and never really actually pressed play on a whole song. Hopefully this will get them to take the band a bit more seriously. But um, like I say, it's not that it's doing anything entirely new. It's just in certain ways, it's hitting certain right buttons that I think this could be I think this could be a good foot thing for them. Personally, in my opinion, I found it very easy and easy and enjoyable to listen to this a few times over. I loved it. It had that sort of nice atmosphere. It felt very atmospheric. Sorry, that's my phone going off. It felt very atmospheric at the same time. That just kind of uh, was nice. You know, all their songs, you know, their, their songs never just sound like a flat. Uh, a flat catchy melody they always a sort of a feeling of something theatric about it that was really there the video played that as well their usual sort of slightly overly theatric uh videos but you gotta love for having character haven't you so um i i enjoyed that aspect as well i just found this to be yeah like i say a good a good example of them uh getting the most out of what they do as a sound and i do hope that it helps them in their expanding to catch some new people and some new fans but as always I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys think now because uh, a lot of the feedback we get from the community is a big part of this. Now, you guys know what I think I've just told you. So tell me your opinions, get in there, justify them as well so I can hopefully get a bit of an idea for what you guys are thinking. We can build on it, have a bit of a discussion. If you want to continue the discussion in more depth, remember we have our Discord, our Reddit. We have all of the social medias linked in the description below as well. So please do feel free to follow them. Uh, you can like and subscribe and do the youtube stuff as well, should you so wish. And also, so remember, a big thank you to our Patreon followers. We're not monetized, so you guys really, really, I always say because it it's true, you really are the lifeblood of this channel. So thank you so much for keeping this all alive for us. And until I hopefully see you in Japan very soon for the next one of these, thank you for making it through to the end of this video. And for now, ciao, ciao.